Powered by WCTV.TV. Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. Coming up, fugitive caught. The man who bailed on his Leon County trial halfway through turns himself in after three days on the run. Also, some strong storms moving through earlier in the day. Heavy rain, wind, even some hail. Mike will have the latest on the forecast. But first, two teens in court facing murder charges in a deadly shooting that played out just outside a Tallahassee daycare. Those teens pleading not guilty earlier today. Bullets were flying in what police call a drug deal gone wrong. A 17-year-old gunned down in the parking lot of Franklin Academy. 18-year-old Jordan Smith, 19-year-old Xavier Coachman are both charged with felony murder and tampering with evidence. But police have still not released who the gunman was in this shooting. Michael Hudak has been following this story for us today and joins us now live. Michael. Xavier Coachman and Jordan Smith were not physically in court uh, today, Eden and Julie, but technically they did make their first court appearance via a Skype call. A judge setting bond for each one of these defendants at $25,000 respectively. And although there will likely be a trial upcoming, the families of both of these parties were extremely happy that this bond was set. Now, Coachman's attorney not wanting to speak on camera, but I was able to speak with Jordan Smith's attorney, Chuck Hobbs. He says that the fact that his client is only 18 certainly played a part in this bond, among other things. He has significant family and property ties to the community, already a business owner at 18 years old. I think that all of those things uh, provided a benefit for him, and I believe those are the reasons why Judge Akins, once he had a chance to review what the evidence is so far, uh, decided to go ahead and grant him a bond. Smith and Coachman are charged with second degree felony murder and tampering with evidence. We'll have much more coming up on Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock. You do not want to miss it. But for now, Eden and Julie, I'll send it back to you. Okay, Michael, thank you. Well, Monday kicked off a week's worth of violence uh, in Tallahassee. Two shootings, that one at the old Bainbridge Road was deadly. And then within the same hour, there was another shooting on West Pensacola Street. Then later Monday night, a body found in the 2000 block of Autumn Lane. The sheriff's office identifying that victim as 26 year old James Smith. Officials still investigating his cause of death. And then on Tuesday, police responding to a burning body off West Pensacola Street near the Kearney Center. 41 year old little Daniel Owens is facing homicide and abuse of corpse charges for that. Then this morning, one injured in a shooting on Tallahassee's south side. Officers responding to the intersection of Wallace and South Calhoun around 4. 30 officers finding one victim suffering from multiple gunshot wounds, but they say none of those wounds were life threatening. Tallahassee police do not have a suspect at this time. If you have any information, you're asked to call TPD. You know, all of these shootings have a lot of people uh, wondering what's going on and calling for an end to all this violence. Capital City correspondent Marielle Carbone has more on that. Marielle. Julie, talking to the Tallahassee Police Department today, they are just pleading that people put down the guns. They say that people should be talking things out, not using weapons, because all of this has a rippling effect. It doesn't just affect the suspect and the victim, but their families, their friends, and really the community as a whole. Now, TPD says they are always out there patrolling uh, and working, but there's not a real way for them to really predict when and where a shooting will take place. Now, based on crime trends and where things are happening, they will shift their resources around to make sure that they're patrolling the areas that need it most, but they're also asking that if you see something to say something because tips can and do help prevent crime. Mass shootings have been stopped recently um, throughout the country because someone picked up the phone, someone told some, someone, hey, this is going on, I don't think it's right, you know, you might want to look into it. And some members of the community I spoke to, they want to see changes. One man telling me that there needs to be more resources for teens to give them purpose and direction, which would help prevent them from committing crimes. So we'll hear more from him as well as other members of the community coming up on Eyewitness News at 6. But for now, reporting live from the Governor's Club, Marielle Carbone, WCTV Eyewitness News. All right, Marielle, yeah, these shootings certainly the talk of the town everywhere I go. That's for sure. All right. Well, a jury now deliberating in a Tallahassee murder trial as a man stands accused of killing his girlfriend's 10-month-old baby. I heard Jeffrey on the couch, like, sound like he wheezing for air. Dewan Barnes taking the witness stand this morning in his own defense. Barnes says he called the child's mother and then 911 when he noticed the baby was struggling to breathe. 
Those 911 tapes played in court today as an operator talks Barnes through CPR. Prosecutors, however, contend Barnes snapped after the child threw up on him, breaking the boy's spine and severing his aorta. Barnes denies all that. The jury started deliberating around 4 o'clock this afternoon. We will keep you posted on a verdict. A man who fled in the middle of his trial earlier this week surrenders to U.S. Marshals today. 26-year-old Deontay Johnson turned himself in about 2.30 this afternoon. According to Marshals, Johnson surrendered peacefully after hiding in Tallahassee for the last few days. Johnson has been wanted since Tuesday when he walked out of his trial. He was found guilty in a deadly 2016 hit and run just hours later. A man's now under arrest for a November murder. 38-year-old Damon Gilbert has been arrested in Las Vegas. That killing was here in Leon County. Gilbert's accused of killing 38-year-old Dwayne Nelson. Leon County sheriffs found Nelson's body while patrolling near the Woodville ballpark on November 23rd of 2018. Gilbert walked up to a Las Vegas police officer earlier this week and told him he was wanted. He is now awaiting extradition back to Leon County. A plea for help today from local farmers hit hard by Hurricane Michael. They say so far the federal government is not doing enough. Michael caused an estimated $3 billion in agricultural losses across Georgia. Yeah, that Georgia alone. Nolani Matthews showing us how that is impacting a farm in Pelham. Hawthorne Farms and Farmer's Daughter Vineyards here in Pelham tell me Hurricane Michael not only ravaged Georgia farmland, it devastated people's livelihood. The morning after the storm, everyone cried. Pictures taken from Renee Moss's phone showing an 85% loss of cotton. Their crop, once worth $1.2 million, used to sustain operations and feed their family, now wiped out. Moss and her husband, third-generation farmers who started Farmer's Daughter Vineyards three years ago. They say due to the lack of disaster relief funding, right now it's their only source of income. We lost about $600,000 of personal money that had been reinvested into the business. So that's basically our nest egg from a decade's worth of work. The Mosses say farmers are disappointed after relief funds promised by lawmakers failed to make the federal budget. They say the bills are piling up and coming due this month. Assistance needed now more than ever. A $3 billion disaster relief package was introduced this week as the U.S. Senate reconvened. It hopes to help farms like this one recover from Hurricane Michael. Reporting in Pelham, no Lonnie Matthews, WCTV Eyewitness News. They say the insurance for farmers is expensive and theirs didn't even cover half of the damage. They say farmers across Georgia and North Florida too still struggling, losing generations of wealth. Well, almost five months after Michael, St. George Island State Park is officially reopening this weekend. The park sustained an estimated $5 million in damage from the storm. $2 million has already been spent to get that park back open just in time as more and more visitors are going for the spring and summer. That's months. right, and I recognize that good news there. Charles yesterday said people were lined up at the gate early in the morning to get in, so that's it's, a good sign. It's a popular place to visit. Beautiful. Maybe not so much on a day like today, though, right? <laughs> right, yeah, today you may just want to stay inside, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, I, I always think that uh, there's never a bad day to be at the beach. No, and, that's true. Uh, especially the, the coastline that we have here, as pretty as it is. Uh, yeah, even with the showers and storms, as, as a weather nerd, some of the better storms I've ever seen have been watching from the coast. I digress. Some of the storms were pretty strong earlier today for sure with that line that came through earlier today, but you can see how quickly it moved out. Had some hail with it, had some gusty winds, had an inch of rain or more, a couple of spots, but now we're a little calmer, but not really dry. We still have some showers down toward the coast and a few toward the north, and even still a few more developing out to the west. So we're not done with this showery pattern. We've got, still got tomorrow, best chance still coming Sunday night much anticipated cold front all the details in a few more minutes mike thanks also coming up new technology may be revolutionizing the way preemie babies are monitored yeah and it could change lives for their moms and dads too that's coming up next in our health alert